properly challenged and properly evidence-based all the new facts and all the new figures that it has, uh, that it has, uh, that has been put in front of them. Thank I you, ask Councillor. the Council to vote to end <coughs> this nonsense now and get the administration to think again. Councillor Cleary, you have up to five minutes to speak to your amendment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a point of clarification, I would propose to speak to all the motions and the amendment in one go, rather than having to just speak the amendment and then again later to the broader motions. Is that okay with you? Yes, that's okay. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Okay, I know I, know I speak for many when I say how grateful I am to uh, Professor David Gregg for the work he has done in interrogating the government's assessed need for housing in Wirral over the next 15 years. He has systematically demolished the assumptions used to generate these targets, especially those around the economy and population trends. Moreover, using the very latest population projections dramatically reduces the likely demand for new housing in Wirral. Professor Gregg has shown that the Council's own forecasts for brownfield housing, on top of Peel Holdings' medium-range expectations for Wirral Waters, plus a modest reduction in our many empty homes is more than enough to meet likely future demand. Yeah. His analysis on its own provides compelling evidence to robustly challenge the government's target. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that is the least the people of Wirral should expect from those elected to represent them and preserve our precious green belt. The yeah. truth. Yeah. As we speak, Mr. Mayor, a new fire station is under construction on Greenbelt Land in Solvall Massive. The fire service's own figures, as part of that planning application, clearly show members. I want to hear the speaker that the response times from that new fire station would, on average, increase. Okay. If Labour councillors are prepared to sacrifice Greenbelt for a new fire station in a sparsely populated village that increases emergency response times then they clearly have a very elastic view of what constitutes very special circumstances. Yes. And, then, and then, Mr. Mayor, there is the proposed golf resort in Hoyle. The economics of this scheme are so questionable, it requires 160 executive homes on Greenbelt land. If the Cabinet thinks council tax receipts from these new homes is reason to sacrifice our Greenbelt, then people will quite reasonably form a view that no Greenbelt land is safe under this administration. Yeah, 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 yeah. If the money already spent on the golf resort had instead been spent on vital infrastructure for rural waters, then we would be further down the road in providing the kind of new housing that everyone in world would support. Absolutely. Yeah. Specifically on the issue of empty homes. Wirral has, I've been given the figures, 4,650 empty dwellings. Almost 2,000 of these are classed as long term, but this, I believe, is an underestimate. I regularly report empty properties in my ward. Many are unknown to the empty properties team. Mr. Mayor, I have nothing but praise to the empty properties team. Their response to my inquiries is always constructive and comprehensive, but with just three full time members of staff, there is clearly massive untapped potential to reduce the number of empty properties. This should always be our priority, and additional investment can be recouped <coughs> through increased council tax. And it's not just empty dwellings. Last year, Wirral Council submitted planning applications to demolish two of its own office blocks adjacent to Hamilton Square and convert them into car parks. Just what Burton that does not mean. One can only hope that the new arrangement with Muse will bring more enlightened thinking and recognise the obvious potential to convert such assets into new residential accommodation. Mr. Mayor, the rate of house building required under these government targets is more than double the actual delivery rate in Wirral over the past decade. Where is the evidence that underlying market conditions indicate such a rapid increase in demand for new housing? How on earth will the supply chain cope with such a rapid escalation in construction activity? We already have some of the worst standards for new homes in the European Union. Our new homes are smaller, and colder than our European peers. If these targets are accepted, we will inflict acres of low quality, high carbon housing with poor access to public transport. Few, if any, will be affordable to those on low incomes. Yeah. Yeah. A council truly 
concern about climate breakdown, poor air quality, and inequality in housing provision would react with horror at these targets. They would, they would mount a principled, reasoned, and robust defense of our agreement. But all of that is absent from the Labour motion. It raises the white flag and meekly accepts the surrender of our agreement. And tonight is our opportunity as councillors to reject that surrender. Thank you, Councillor Cleary, and you're an example to members by keeping within time. Thank you. Now, um, now that all the motion. Oh, sorry. Labour motion. Councillor George Davis, you have up to five minutes to speak to your motion. James Brokenshire. No, it's George Davis. Davis. <laughs> pity, pity about that. We call George Davis your Right, Mr. Mayor. There is a legal duty to prepare a local plan. Which will yeah, 14 years. Yeah, Members of the public, oh, please me. allow the speaker to continue. Yeah. Yeah. Councillor George Davis. Members, I want to hear from the proposal of the Labour motion. I'm the There is a legal duty to prepare a local plan which will guide and determine land use and will over the next 15 years from this Tory government. Conservative ministers have set will a target of 12,000 new homes to be built in Will by 2035, which will be extremely challenging as opposition candidates are aware. It is crucial our local plan is designed based on the distinct needs and characteristics of our borough and the needs of our residents. The borough's green belt provides a vital amenity for Will residents. We are home to well beating parks and gardens. Indeed, this is part of what puts Will firmly on the green space map. We are also accurate, acutely conscious of preventing urban sprawl. But the blunt truth, Council, is this. There is insufficient brownfield land to accommodate the government's housing target for Will, and there is currently no alternative to reviewing other than to review the potential of land in the Green Belt to meet the shortfall in the Buddha's housing and land supply. The Council is to submit a sound and legally compliant local plan to the Tory Secretary of State. Incompetent. The Government and the Opposition Councillors who have called this meeting know full well Will does not have enough brownfield land to meet their housing building requirements. At the moment, we have identified enough brownfield space for 2,410 year olds. In addition to the thousands which have been granted planning permission but have not yet been started. As Deputy Leader of the Council, our administration's policy is very much brownfield site first. As residents of this fantastic borough, we all value its open spaces and will continue to protect as much of our green belt as we can. Major brownfield sites have already been identified and work is underway on exploring every possible brownfield site available. This is why we will be taking, talking to residents through an extensive program of community consultation over the coming weeks and months. Whilst we are determined to protect our green belt and making any of those sites available for development will be our last resort. It has been made unequivocally clear to us by government that we do not complete a plan to meet their targets, they will not hesitate to complete the task. Challenging oh, there. Section Challenging. Four. Now let's turn to four. the policy position of the Conservative group. Tory councillors claim that under no circumstances would they build on Willow's Green Belt if they were the administration. But we should call this out for what it really is. Pure political posture yeah. Yeah. that was nothing to solve the Green Belt problem created by their friends and colleagues in Westminster. The truth is, Council, Will Tories clearly cannot decide what to do or not or don't do when it comes to the Green Belt. Liz Truss MP 
The Tories number two in the Treasury, and Jake, Jacob Rees Mock MP, a leading Tory contender to replace Theresa May as Prime Minister. <laughs> all, of these, all of these senior MPs have written in national newspapers explaining why they believe Tories should support the building on the Green Belt. Outrageous. So does the Conservative group, so does the Conservative group, Tory Green or instead choose to take the populist stance in this make your mind up time. In relation to their motion, instead of swallowing PR and spin from the developer fans, they should have done their research when it comes to the number of will be in its local plans. There isn't a shred of evidence to back up the Tony's proposals, therefore rendering them invalid. If they were to present the plan to Secretary of State, their colleagues and friend James Brokenshaw, he would, he would be generated. Not only would it be highly embarrassing for the opposition, since they are the same party, but it would mean government commissioners arriving in will to really swathes of our green belt. The Tories are so what's the different developers before will residents, and hopefully members will see right through this tonight and reject their illegal local plan proposals. As members will know, however, working with some of Widow's landowners can be a challenge. Yep. For nearly 10 years, yeah. the council has worked with and supported Peel, the owners of Widow Waters 1. In 2010, the then Prime Minister, David Cameron, and the then Tory leader of the council, Jeff Green, granted Widow Waters <coughs> housing zone and enterprise zone status. And still, nothing has happened. The plans and artists' impression for Willow Waters were revealed and new housing offices and workspaces were promised. The council included the 13,500 new homes Willow Waters claimed it was going to build in its projections to meet future housing needs. So why didn't you make a local plan then? Not then? all the housing needs of Willow residents would be met by Willow Waters alone. There will still be demand for new homes elsewhere in the world. But to meet the status of suitable available and deliver the time, we will Disgraceful. Peel has written to all councillors saying it now thinks it will build around 6,450 new homes by 2035. But that is still less than half the amount promised in Peel's lobbying documents. They say they are still committed to the 13,000 but only over the lifetime of the world wars. This is now, Mr. Oh, this isn't fair. Disgraceful. Terrible. Sit down. Stop everyone else. Thank you. Thank you. We are still in the consultation process, and I encourage all institute groups and individuals to test democracy so we can ensure the local plan is shaped in the best interest of local residents. And I call on members tonight to support the Labour motion. Sit down. And seconded, I open the floor Are any to any members who wish to speak to these motions and amendments. May I remind you that you have up to three minutes to address the council. Yeah. 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 Councillor David Ellison. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. It is clear that a large number of generic and personally addressed emails and letters have been received by the majority of Wirral councillors in recent weeks in this chamber. Without exception, the communications that I have received have demanded that all councillors of whatever political persuasion should defend our unique green belt and yeah. 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 to ensure that it is not built upon. Members should be respecting the wishes of the constituents who elected them and should be working together to preserve our green belt to ensure 
but it is not end up in the hands of developers who are motivated purely by greed. The Will Green Belt has been designed, or was designed, to provide a buffer between the individual historic residential hamlets to avoid creating a vast urban sprawl. It is established fact that building on the Green Belt should only be considered in very exceptional circumstances. And as a member and long and chairman, former chairman of the planning committee, we have always worked to that objective. Greenbelt application should only be considered for approval as an absolute last resort, when all other solutions designed to provide land for residential development have been fully exhausted and rejected for sound planning reasons. I do not intend to try and make sense of some of the wildly contradictory statistics that have been banded about in regard to Wirral's future housing needs. Suffice to say, that they appear to be based on a flawed analysis of unrealistic housing need targets stemming from the council's own overinflated uh, population and economic growth projections. One we do not need as many as the, uh, as the uh, council has decided that we should be, uh, provide. All this coupled with an underestimate of suitable brownfield housing, housing land currently available for development. These need figures, however interpreted, seem to take little account of the vast swathes of unoccupied houses, over 4,000, that could be brought back into use, along with well over 1,500 extant, for those who don't know what that means, approved planning applications that have not yet been progressed. Yeah, yeah. 20 seconds. If we add to this 600 plus appeals warrant at Wirral Development's housing units currently receiving consideration by the planning department, Along with an assessment of Peel's impressive aspirations regarding provision of well over 6,000 units over the next four years, there is absolutely no need to consider building in our green belt. Do some overtime, and our members have been interrupted. I think it's time we stuck to our time. If you want to change the council standing orders, you have opportunities elsewhere. Mr. Mayor, I have uh, one important point that would take me less than 30 seconds to make. Oh, go on, Councillor. <laughs> uh, as recently as last Saturday, I'm gathering here. One of my constituents handed in a petition to my home containing over 1,126 names objecting to proposal to develop a substantial part of the Green Belt on the Colby West Kirby border. Council meetings usually include an agenda item allowing formal submission of petitions requiring formal response. This extraordinary council meeting does not include that on the agenda. So I have taken the liberty, Mr. Mayor, of formally submitting this petition now in support of my pr presentation. In conclusion, do not permit inappropriate building on our unique green belt. And I would like to formally hand this to you, sir, to be processed in the usual manner and demand a formal response in return. Thank you for your uh, work. Thank you, Councillor Jerry Williams. Oh, OK, well, Councillor, uh, a maiden speech from Councillor Liz Gray. Will members please offer the usual courtesies? Thank you. I'm pleased that the Labour motion makes it clear that we oppose the concept of releasing green wealth for development unless we are absolutely forced to do so. I'm deeply concerned, deeply concerned about the prospect of any plans to build on green belt land. However, I do think it is important that we remind ourselves that most of it is now privately owned farmers' fields, and ordinary people have no access at all to most of it. If together we can be positive and creative, it could be possible that we avoid blighting the views of the countryside of so many rural residents, as appears to be the prospect in the current plans. We could devise a plan that could open up relatively remote areas of Greenbelt for public use, not just for housing, but in outdoor sport and recreation, in line with the NPPF government guidelines, and allow actual physical access to Greenbelt while still maintaining much of its open character. Today, most of us enjoy, at the most, visual only access to some green belt. We have views, and I don't underestimate the value of this. 
But if we plan carefully, it could be possible that future generations will not just have the homes they need, but enjoy physical access to more of our open spaces and all the health and well-being that this will provide. I repeat, any development on Greenbelt must be a last resort, forced on us by this Tory government. Who leave us with very few legally sound options. But if we do end up with no legal alternative other than releasing some green belt, then let us plan with the health and well-being of future generations in mind and open up some of our beautiful countryside for the benefit of the many, not the few.
into concrete urban sprawls. In fact, I would go so far as to say that turning some of the more grotty sites on Wirral into appealing housing developments would not only meet the perceived housing requirements, it would also go a long way to improving the life chances of a large number of Wirral residents. <coughs> the government's policy, that green belt boundaries should only be altered in exceptional circumstances. And exceptional <coughs> circumstances cannot be justified anywhere in the world. When it is stated there are at least 4,900 homes, I heard that figure from David Ball himself this morning, empty homes available. Available for restitution which could provide good homes for many families in world. And then, of course, there is the World Waters Development, of which we've already heard a bit from that. Several years was, announced, uh, was launched with much fanfare, a fantastic vision, the biggest building site in the country, we were told. Field holders have stated they are prepared to build 6,450 new homes within the lifetime of this plan, and are indeed poised to start with the first 500 in the coming weeks. Please conclude. Why then are these plans being sat on when they are a large part of the answer? Those two elements alone almost cover the perceived magic number without even taking into consideration any brownfield site. This being the case, then why are the Labour group putting forward so many sites on the green belt as proposals for giant building sites? It will be vandalism on a mega scale. Time's up, Councillor Powell. Sorry, I just want to finish on one sentence, Mr. Mayor. It's not about party politics, Mr. Mayor. It's oh. Oh. 
all the inequalities that come with that. Bellington councillors have always encouraged social housing. We know it is badly needed, but the social housing associations have been marginalised by this government. As our late great councillor Walter Smith commented, once the green belt is gone, it's gone. Can you imagine the abomination of house building outside the Lever Causeway, our gateway to the green belt? How do we explain this to Mr. Dow of Alexander Drive Rock Benny, who walks his dock, and Mr. Smith of the Mount of States who cycles, or Mr. Allen who is recuperated from the operation? This is not in our backyard, this is everyone's backyard. I urge everyone to engage in this consultation and make their views heard. It is essential for the well being of us all and those who will follow us in the future. How important is this area for the health of people on wheels? It is a priceless asset that we destroy at our peril. For years, kick the can down the road excuses. And this isn't our problem, mate, from the other side. Here. Time's up, I'm afraid. The issue is, it is your problem. Get your governors to do something about their destruction of the world as we know it. <laughs>
cabinet meeting later in the year when this whole thing will be discussed. So a lot of water is going to flow under the bridge before then. So again, I'm not sure why we're meeting tonight. Now, we have to build over 12,000 houses over 15 years to satisfy the government decision. And that is based on the government's own figures. So why is the government telling us what figure we've got to achieve? Surely, will people... Challenge 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 Section 44, challenges. That's the question. You don't know what you're talking about. Sorry, Mr. Minister, people are listening. They might have to hear some of the arguments. Absolutely. We should not have top-down housing figures from people who know nothing about will and in many cases are probably never even visited. Exactly, so challenges. I wrote this appeal recently expressing concern over their failure to deliver on their area house building promises. The schemes on the table now for appeal add up, and again we heard the figure before, to around 1,100. They originally promised 13,500, did not yet be delivered, yet the Lib Dems and the Tories appear to accept Peel's figures as if the fact, and what I'm saying is if Peel have actually got evidence as to what they're going to do, let's see the evidence. I want to see well, it. compulsory purchase orders on them then. Now, Councillor Blakely, before Mr Mayor, used the phrase, we're 14 years too late. But during the last 14 years, we've had periods when we've had either a Tory council or a Tory Lib Dem council. What achievements were made in that particular time to satisfy our needs? And the Tory motion tonight refers to 6,000 empty properties in Wilt. And again, the figure's been used tonight, and I think Councillor clearly used it as well. The actual figure is 4,650. Cabinet Minister Liz Trust, I think as Councillor Davis said earlier, and Jacob Rees Mock, who wants to be the next Tory leader, but don't tell Boris that, because he thinks he's going to get the job. They say that the planning law should be ripped up. The planning law should be ripped up so that homes can be built on the green belts, and these are prominent Conservative people at national level. And I would not disagree with them more, Mr Mayor. Developing green sites must our housing on green sites must be a last resort. We should do everything possible to build on brownfield sites. Mr. Mr. Mayor, I support the Labour Group motion tonight, which ensures that we'll make strong representations to this government concerning their top-down housing targets, and at the same time, we'll use the four MPs in the will to assist us in that about this whole issue and I would urge all residents in the world to do whatever they can to get their views across. This Labour Council will listen to them. Will to determine explicitly what will be protected as greenbelt, what will be brought forward as commercial building land, and most importantly, what is for development of housing. And this, Mr Mayor, is most pertinent, for I believe this administration has been scared to produce a local development plan as it lays bare their damaging plans before the people of Wibble that we have here tonight. Yes. Not so long ago, Councillor Davis was in the local press and he said, Whittle Council welcomes large-scale developments in the home building of Whittle Waters. Now this seems to be at odds with what the current happenings are, as people seem to be made, being made some sort of scapegoat, despite reaffirming that they are ready to go with planning applications already submitted. They have confirmed again that 6,000 housing units can be delivered by 2032. So I asked Mr. where is the enthusiasm? from the council leader that I saw in my previous uh, time here, where's it gone? Why is, why is he intent on ignoring an area desperate for redevelopment, an area of relative deprivation? 
And any of that ironically evokes labour. Why, why does he not want these people to have better homes and better opportunities, Mr Mayor? Indeed, he, unless we absolutely clear, the rest of the Labour the rest of the Labour group will be complicit in this in voting through the administration's plans. Absolutely. He would rather level great swathes of my ward, Hoy Lake, for an unwanted golf course and 160 executive homes. Yeah. Houses yeah. that will be far out of the reach of the residents who will be uh, looking towards Will Waters to be home. One minute. With questionable figures of 12,000 housing units of need, figures that have been shown to be grossly overestimated by independent analysis, with 6,000 units available at Whittle Waters, with 6,000 empty homes across the border, but it really is it is the need for this green belt fire sale. Indeed, if the commercial development doesn't happen at Whittle Waters, there will not be the population increase that the council forecast, meaning the 12,000 units will be even more overestimated. So this leads me to question the motives. Is it really about the likes of Poy Lake and other areas being used as a cash cow? Yeah. Building 160 yeah. band G and beach houses, providing lucrative returns for the council coffers and council tax. Yeah. Selling our green belt, our green belt, for millions of pounds to private yeah. developers. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, there are strong feelings across the whole of this chamber on green belt and on these motions this evening. Just a week ago, I sat in a briefing where Councillor Muspratt Labour member stated that herself and Councillor Jay Williams, another Labour member, have actually been involved in a judicial review in favour of saving green belts in Wirral. And I urge them and others with similar commendable resolve in the chamber tonight to show integrity and vote against this green belt decimation. <laughs>